were sitting here, we were talking about Mozart duets, and now we're in a very, very different sound world with Brahms. Works for four hands. Yes, it's a completely different world. Some of it is still a little bit classical. It obviously comes out of classical tradition, but it's much more romantic world with, um, I, I'd say, more, much more dramatic range. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, more spontaneous, wild moods. Mm -hmm and um, lots of rubatos, you know, and the use of pedal is quite different, you know, quite tricky thing we mm. find. Yeah. And a really rich textures. Rich well. textures, and you have to be also careful not to make it too heavy. I think mm -hmm. that's one of the challenges. Absolutely, the counterpoint has to be so clear in yes. Brahms, and he was such a master yes. of that. So even when you're using the entire keyboard, mm. there's yes. one thing which is nice in Brahms is there's more room to move uh, compared to Mozart, where you're squeezed together. We yes. have the whole piano, yes. to, uh, to, and it's more, yes, more spread out a little more, more orchestral know. sound at Very times much. as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, talking yeah. of that, I mean, actually, the, the two the, the the two piano or four hand pieces for Brahms yeah. was a, the way in which a lot of people heard his orchestral music, mm. wasn't it? It was like a sort of record player of the time. Absolutely. And so if you could play the piano well, as so many people did in the 19th century to make their own entertainment, they would devour these scores of the symphonies and indeed even the concertos arranged for piano duet. Well, yes, I believe yeah. you're actually going to play a very rare arrangement um, of the first piano concerto for two pianos. Yes, it's right? actually... Yeah. It was originally uh, arranged by Brahms as a piano duet, so it incorporates the solo concerto part and the orchestra, and the whole thing is amalgamated into one. Yeah, but we, we, we thought that it might work better on... Two. On the two instruments. So it's written as a duet, but we will probably play on two to give ourselves more space and variety also with the pedaling and mm, range yeah, pedaling of sound. pedaling is quite tricky, mm. but it's something I think the overall effect of an orchestral feeling. Piece. Yeah. Yes, it, it, it works better with two pianos rather mm. than... And actually, you're not, one of you is not the soloist and one of you is not the orchestra. No. It's not written no. like that, is not it? Not at all. No, the it, I say, both parts are really w woven together. Yes, to it's, it's very interesting to discover it. Mm. We were just playing it the other day, yes. how different it sounds and to mm. be able to play both. You Definitely. Know, it's, it's incredible. And what really struck us was how uh, much of a debt Brahms owes to Bach and his counterpoint. It's mm. astonishing in those early works, what a master he was. And I think you know, one's aware of it when you play the solo part and mm. when you play with an orchestra. But there's so many technical difficulties to overcome just to be on top of that massive mm. solo part. Yes. When, but you're not as aware as well. Certainly, that's how, how I yes, felt. When we a tried lot it. of it's quite gothic as well. Yes, you mentioned it is, it Bach, is. and yeah. when you play it on two pianos, it really it is. comes yeah. to life. It's a completely no, different imagine. piece. Yeah. Yes, no, that's going to be a really rare treat. And of mm. course, we'll have the two. Uh, we'll have two pianos, pianos playing with the requiem as well, and yeah. we'll be hearing music because we are having a chamber festival largely here. Mm. And we will be hearing the quintet. Mm. In F minor on piano duet mm. and the requiem. So yeah. it, it's really quite a central part of this series, actually, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And shall we turn to the Hungarian dancers, which mm. are obviously some of his most famous piano duet music? Brahms mm. considered that he was arranging real Hungarian folk music, when in yeah. fact it, it was actually a sort of gypsy um, mm. hybrid music Definitely. that he was yes, hearing. Not so authentic. Not it's quite not, authentic. No, not exactly. We were saying some of it is quite childish. Yes. It's got this sort of stamping mixture of rhythm. But I think that Brahms picked up all kinds of gypsy and Hungarian themes during his travels. In 1853, he was with Romania, the violinist, and that's where he met Liszt and famously fell asleep whilst Liszt was playing, and <laughs> that's a whole other story. <laughs> and I think that throughout Brahms' work, you hear the Hungarian spirit and folk song emerging in the most unexpected places, and it's a wonderful sort of fingerprint in his music. But the, the actual Hungarian dancers were originally written as duets, and they made a lot of money he, for, for Brahms, and he sold all these copies, and you can imagine them being played all over Europe and yeah, no because doubt they were, in the they were quite accessible for yeah. amateur pianists yeah. as well. Though they are tricky, them. aren't they? They are very <laughs> tricky. It's, it's an entirely different thing when you're yeah. professional to play them. Absolutely. Different challenges, but... Yeah. And what, are, what yeah. are the challenges, actually, of playing Well, I think uh, balance is very important mm, because, yeah. you know, it can, you know, can be quite a lot of volume, you yeah. know, and, and I think because of rubatos, as we say, mm. the joints between the sections, you mm. know, they can, you have to really feel them together. And it's, yeah. 
it's more feeling rather than anything else, really. Absolutely, and there has to be a lot of spontaneity. So it, we, we don't work it out too t closely, and we like to feel that we can go on the spur of the moment within a, a very well-prepared framework. Like real gypsies. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and also the other thing is that they repeat quite often, so one has to find different colours, timings, okay. and uh, approach the same phrase from a, from a different angle. Yes. On the repeat. I mean, do you feel in some ways Brahms was slightly writing against his character here and he was really letting his hair down? I think there's some, some of truth these in that. What there is, mean? yeah. Mm. There is a lot of wild characters. Mm. But at the same time, some of mm. the classical side of Brahms is always there, yeah. which I find fascinating. It is fascinating. I think there's fusion of the fact that he was in, from North Germany and he has this, this cooler, severer quality. And he took it on board Beethoven and Bach and Mozart's music and Schubert. People often forget that Brahms was very influenced by Schubert. Mm. And then the Hungarian influence on the travels. And finally to Vienna, where, of course, was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And they would have heard music played by uh, Hungarian musicians, even street music, cafe music. And of course the waltzes yes. well, that you're also going to be playing. The famous set of waltzes, exactly. And uh, those, I would say, going back to Schubert, they really originate from Schubert's Lendler, and then Johann Strauss, of course, picks up that. And they're full of, uh, for Brahms, they are lighter pieces. They have a real smile to them. Yeah, it's a bit of a crowd pleaser, I'd they, say. They are, but and they're bit. also, uh, I think, a piece that lots of people will know from yeah. having tried at home themselves. Yes, yes. yes. Um, but there's a lot it's of nice. charm. It's the, the lighter side of, of Vienna. And um, there are very. It's an, it will be an elegant interlude in a, in the middle of our program. Yes, <laughs> your weighty program. Yes. yes. Well, I think we're going to hear you. We're very lucky to be able to hear you now play the very first Hungarian dance in G minor. Indeed. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.